Hey, welcome back everybody. Great to see you. Hope we're having a wonderful Friday so far and we've got a lot going on out there with an ongoing blizzard, severe weather, as well as another major storm system working in through the west coast currently. And unfortunately, uh, the real cherry on top of all of that is a major Arctic outbreak with the potential of some southern snow and ice going into early next week. Uh, so, you know, this January has already been very crazy and unfortunately we're getting kind of close to the halfway point in the month here uh, and it looks to continue that way and there really has been no rest for the weary and uh, really that's going to continue for quite some time now. Uh, now I will ask if you haven't already subscribed definitely consider doing so we're getting very close to 7,000 now which is super awesome and I've said this the past couple videos but it continues to be the same way that again most of my viewers are returning viewers who are not subscribed so again just make it easy on yourself hit the subscribe button and uh, hit that bell as well for the latest notifications and uh, your phone will get buzzed every time I upload uh, a video with another update for you all. So again, just makes your life easier, and of course, it also helps the channel grow, uh, which is uh, you know always a big helpful thing as well. Uh, also, like the video if you like it, and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and what you're seeing out there as the storm system continues to cross the country. And of course, if you have any cool videos or pictures out there, uh, definitely make sure to submit those with the uh, link below in the description. It should be titled uh, "Viewer Submission Form" uh, or something like that. But if you do that, then you'll have a chance uh, to get featured, much to, uh, like uh, Chris McBrien here. This is his second picture I think or third that he submitted to the channel so thank you a lot Chris uh, this is from Meredith New Hampshire and uh, he talked about how the last three nor'easters that have moved through have really just brought a lot of snow and not much ice or rain uh, so definitely good news for all the snow lovers up in this part of New Hampshire uh, and you can tell by this picture definitely uh, it has been a very active January as I said and again that likely to continue even for the northeast here going through the next couple of days now we do have another uh, video submission actually, this is the first video that I've had submitted so thank you a lot. This actually comes from my friend Rowan who I go to school with at uh, the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. He is also a meteorology major. Uh, so if uh, you're interested in checking out some of his stuff, I'll definitely link his Twitter in the description and I'll also try to remember to add a um, kind of a physical, um, I guess, a letter or type it up on the screen somewhere. Uh, if I can remember. But if not, I'll definitely put his Twitter in the description of the video. And this video also came from earlier this week. This was Tuesday when we had that major flooding through much of the southeast. Uh, campus got about three inches of rain or so. And you can see there all of that water that uh, is normally uh, down in a little creek on campus unfortunately came out of its banks and uh, really did some damage. So uh, anyway, thank you a lot for that video, Rowan. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this, I'll see you later today in class. So uh, kind of uh, interesting stuff there. Alrighty, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this. Now, again, we've got a lot on going out there today as well as going into this weekend and uh, even into early next week and potentially even later next week. So at this point, I might as well just say we've got a lot going on uh, until, you know, eventually I just pass out from exhaustion. Um, but let's go ahead and start talking about some of this. Now, again, the kind of big story maker is this big old blob right in the middle of your screen. That's that storm system that is bringing severe weather currently, some blizzard conditions, uh, and uh, just some rain for other folks, but also a lot of wind. And you'll notice here in a moment when we look at our map, we have a lot of uh, different watches, warnings, and advisories for just about the entire country. In fact, it's much like we're repeating what we did on Tuesday. Uh, now back towards the west coast, you can't quite see in. In fact, I probably should have zoomed this satellite imagery out a little bit, but notice this kind of flow coming in from the Pacific. Uh, that is going to lead to another strong storm system for you folks out near Oregon, Washington, and California, uh, really going into as early as now, but into tomorrow especially, and uh, we'll talk about that at some point in the video as well. But if you're out there and you want to just skip to that, uh, use the timestamps below uh, for all of the timing in the video. Alrighty, um, with that said now, let's go ahead and kind of take a look at uh, what is happening uh, with our radar imagery and our watches and warnings. And again, there's a lot that is happening. Uh, so you'll notice kind of the entire country is covered <laughs> just about with watches, warnings and advisories. But we'll start with radar imagery and then we'll get to all of the um, kind of advisories that have been issued. Uh, so kind of this area to the north here of the storm system up through Chicago, Milwaukee and back towards Iowa, that is a lot of snow currently falling. In fact, uh, a lot of folks have already picked up half a foot near a foot in spots, and that is going to continue to slowly work off towards the north and east today through much of Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, now to the south of there, here through kind of Louisville uh, and uh, much of Kentucky, southern Ohio, and Indiana, really just a good old-fashioned cold rain right now moving on through, but also very windy conditions. 
Now it's to the south of there though, through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, into the Carolinas and portions of Tennessee that will have more of a severe weather threat today and we'll definitely have to watch for that. Uh, at the time of recording this, we already have a tornado watch up for much of Mississippi and uh, waking up this morning, I was checking on radar and we actually had a tornado warning. It looked like it was radar confirmed as well, just meaning that it was definitely on the ground. So. Unfortunately, uh, January has been uh, not so nice to us here in the severe weather department, especially here kind of through Dixie Alley in the deep south, uh, where we continue to get these storms to bring uh, severe weather. So unfortunately, today's another one of those days. Now, in terms of the watches, the warnings, and the advisories, well, to the north where we have all that snow, obviously we do have a healthy um, plethora of some winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories, and even um, a couple of blizzard warnings kind of up through portions of Michigan here and back towards Iowa. Uh, and we'll definitely, uh, you know, continue to monitor those conditions. But again, this storm is a blizzard. We've been talking about that potential. And sure enough, uh, the National Weather Service is labeling it as such. Now, all of the beige boxes you see on your screen that are basically covering the entire east, those are wind advisories for winds gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour this afternoon. The kind of mustard colors are high wind warnings for winds gusting up near 60 at times. Uh, so again, just about everyone going to see those windy conditions today. Now, moving back towards the central part of the country, all of these kind of uh, gray and blue colors that you're seeing on uh, this general area I have circled, those are all wind chill uh, advisories or warnings or watches. Uh, and again, behind this storm system, very cold Arctic air is going to settle into the country, and in fact, it's already doing so. Um, that very cold air getting funneled into the system right now is leading to the need for all of these um, you know, dangerously cold uh, weather advisories. And uh, back out west, also very active this way, a lot of winter storm warnings. We've even got some blizzard warnings and uh, even, I imagine, probably some uh, winter storm watches as well out here uh, from Oregon down through California and Nevada. And again, another big storm system going to enter the west coast here within the next couple of days. Or really, today, I should say. All right, uh, so the order here that we're going to go in, we're going to start with uh, this big storm in the east because we've been discussing it for so long now. Let's go ahead and just get that off our plate, and this should be the last video that we really have to dive in depth on it. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to discuss the new storm system coming in on the west coast and the impacts that way. And then finally, we will uh, end this whole thing out by talking about that Arctic air outbreak as well as the potential uh, for some southern snow and ice going into uh, early next week and even the potential that that could turn into a bigger uh, storm up the east coast as well. So we'll discuss all of that there at the end. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go ahead and start here uh, with severe weather. Again, we do have a severe weather threat today. A lot of folks under this slight risk, which is a level 2 out of 5 for much of... Uh, excuse me, uh, through much of uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, back through Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, and then this uh, kind of orange area on your screen, that's a level three out of five uh, with that potential of severe weather through much of northern Mississippi and Alabama for the afternoon hours of today. Now, this does include a tornado threat. Uh, that um, kind of brown area on your map indicates a chance of a tornado happening uh, within a 25 mile radius, a 5% chance of that happening at uh, any given point today. And then the green uh, is just kind of the lower end threat of that, but still possible to see a brief isolated tornado. All right, let's go ahead and time this out for you and uh, give you kind of the latest uh, rundown on how this is going to go today. And I'll go ahead and move this into this afternoon. So again, obviously two big components with the storm. The northern component here has a lot of the snowy side of things uh, with those blizzard conditions from Iowa up through Michigan. Uh, but on the southern side is where we have that rain and severe weather. Uh, now, if you're watching kind of here into southern uh, Indiana, Illinois, and into Kentucky, this is going to be more of just a rain event, uh, not so much on the severe weather side. But if you're watching again, kind of down in this stretch that I have circled, that's where we have the potential for some strong to severe storms uh, this afternoon and even going into overnight tonight by the time we get into the Carolinas. So you'll notice this afternoon, here we go, this is about 3 o'clock, still dealing with a lot of snow up in the Midwest, that continuing to pile up, but here comes the severe weather, uh, kind of in whatever warm sector is able to build here uh, from Georgia into the Carolinas, as well as uh, this kind of, uh, you know, squall line itself on the backside. Uh, so anywhere kind of in the bottom right hand corner of where this low pressure is, that's where we're going to have that severe weather threat through this afternoon. And as we go through this evening, even that threat moving into the Carolinas where we could have some nocturnal severe weather. And this is about 7 o'clock tonight, you'll notice. Um, again, severe weather possible from North Carolina south through um, South Carolina and Georgia, while now it's just good old-fashioned cold rain for West Virginia and Virginia outside of some higher elevation snow. Now, as for the northeast, again, going to be mainly rain with this system as well, but as we go into overnight tonight, again, still a lot of heavy snow up into Wisconsin and Michigan, but here comes that snow trying to work into sections of New York State as well, and uh, even there into southern Ontario, uh, that snow will begin to fall overnight tonight. 
Uh, now, going into uh, kind of overnight tonight even further, again, rain for the I-95 corridor. Not much of a severe weather threat, not really any wintry weather threat. Could have a couple uh, areas of some isolated flooding, so definitely need to watch that. But any snow in the Northeast really hangs on through upstate New York, through Vermont, New Hampshire. By the time we're going into tomorrow morning, up through Maine as well is where we could see some wintry weather. Uh, now, tomorrow afternoon, things will be much more quiet for most folks. You'll notice here comes, uh, here's that cold front, all that cold air now spilling behind it and much drier air as well. Uh, but because of all of this wind with this storm system and the lakes, or the Great Lakes, I should uh, specify, are still relatively ice-free, uh, we're going to get a lot of very strong wind and we're going to get some big-time lake effect snow tomorrow afternoon through much of western Michigan, uh, from Buffalo down through Erie, through Cleveland, and even up potentially into upstate New York through our Saturday afternoon, through overnight Saturday as this map continues, and uh, even going into our early Sunday, that lake effect snow continuing. So a lot of folks are going to get kind of a one-two punch here. They're going to get the first kind of shield of snow, and then they're going to get the backside with that lake effect. And uh, unfortunately, as many of you in that part of the country are aware, uh, forecasting the exact location of these bands of lake effect snow are difficult, but just know uh, a lot of people are going to get absolutely buried with some snow up here. All right, taking a look at uh, kind of winter weather and winter storm impacts over the next uh, one to three days. Again, you'll notice a lot of the country getting buried with some winter weather. Obviously, up here into the Midwest, as we've been talking, a lot of snow on the way, and we have even up to major impacts for folks there. Uh, even some places sprinkling in some extreme impacts here into the UP of Michigan. Uh, and this is straight from the Weather Prediction Center. Another area with extreme impacts right here near Buffalo. Again, that lake effect machine is going to crank up. Travel is going to be impossible. Uh, and uh, we could even have some power outage issues. Uh, now, I'm not saying it's going to be right over Buffalo itself. It could be a little south of there. It could be a little north of there. We'll just have to kind of now cast that, unfortunately. Uh, up through Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, more of a minor to moderate impact event, but still impacts. Same story for the higher elevations of Appalachia from uh, extreme northern North Carolina up through the Virginias and Pennsylvania. And we could even see some back-end snow here through Oklahoma and Arkansas as that storm is pulling away. Now, through the West Coast, again, a bit of a spoiler alert here, but a lot of higher elevations going to see major to extreme impacts here from uh, the mountains of Oregon uh, down through the mountains of Utah, very high impacts with this event. And again, we'll get there in just a moment, but just so you know, that part of the country also uh, going to be under some big time problems. All right, how much snow specifically? Well, again, this is straight from the uh, National Weather Service in your local office. Northern and kind of western Michigan here within the next 48 hours, a foot to a foot and a half of snow quite likely for a lot of those areas. Uh, same story here through much of kind of central and eastern Wisconsin. Uh, but if you're watching in the UP of Michigan, you've got the best shot likely at getting more than two feet of snow. Not out of the question, I think, uh, by the time the shield of snow and all the lake effect is done. Uh, very possible there. Now, areas further to the south here, uh, kind of northern Indiana, central Illinois, and into northern Ohio. On the back end, we could see some snow, uh, so maybe a couple of inches in those regions. But again, the highest impacts here through Wisconsin and Michigan with the storm as we're seeing those blizzard conditions for those of you that are under those blizzard warnings. All right, the northeast, again, also no stranger to um, active weather here. And uh, through Maine, down through v uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, those higher elevations, again, could see, you know, half a foot of snow, not out of the question. Uh, but unfortunately, I think, especially in Vermont and New Hampshire, on the backside, we're going to see some rain kind of mix in at the end. But on the front side, definitely a good thumping of snow. Uh, now, most of this snow you're seeing back here, again, this is going to be lake effect driven. You'll notice uh, already right over Buffalo uh, for the next 48 hours, expected about a foot of snow. Um, now, I'll tell you, that could be more, that could be less, that could shift north, that could shift south. Again, you folks here in Buffalo are very well aware, uh, one side of town can get absolutely pummeled with a foot or two of snow, while the other side has relatively green grass. And that's just kind of the general nature of these um, lake effect snow bands. So, we'll watch out for it. I think in tomorrow's video, we'll have a better idea as we kind of now cast this. Uh, but again, most of you watching this are kind of weather nerds at heart a little bit, so I'm sure you've got a radar app on your phone uh, that you can check out. And obviously, if you get issued under a snow squall warning, uh, then that's a pretty good sign that you're going to be under the gun. Now, eastern Canada, again, also no stranger to active weather here, and especially down through uh, really starting now into sections of Ontario. We're getting big time uh, snow to kind of move on through, and uh, eventually this afternoon getting up into Quebec and Quebec City, a lot of that snow kind of uh, falling here overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning. 
Now that snow likely to continue throughout the afternoon, although becoming a bit more isolated here, kind of through uh, the Quebec Ontario line there. Uh, but further east, up towards uh, Newfoundland and Labrador and uh, New Brunswick, that snow now picking up. I do think we will see more rain than anything in Nova Scotia there. Unfortunately, again, that warm air kind of moving inland. Uh, but again, nonetheless, a lot of snow for a lot of folks, and even back in snow showers as uh, late on as uh, into our Monday, uh, you'll notice, and again, for those of you folks that get lake effect snow in Canada, also going to happen here uh, going into our Sunday, Monday, and even potentially early Tuesday. All right, how much snow here? Again, I think a good uh, 20 centimeters of snow ballpark here for much of interior Quebec and uh, Ontario, uh, with kind of areas back towards um, uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, kind of uh, on the coastal regions here. Could see 20 to 30 centimeters, not out of the question. Um, but again, you can kind of find the key at the bottom and uh, your exact location. Unfortunately, I'm not the best with Canadian geography. I'll try to get better. Um, but uh, again, nonetheless, that's something I'm going to need to work on. So just kind of find where you live and uh, the key is at the bottom in centimeters. Alrighty, that is the um, kind of East Coast and what we're seeing out there. Let's discuss the West Coast now. Again, this is a completely different storm system with completely different impacts. And uh, again, as I've been saying, no rest for the weary. And I'll be very happy to get to early next week where hopefully we just have one storm to talk about and we're not bouncing all over the country here. Uh, as you can imagine, that is a little tiring. So uh, let's go ahead and start talking about the West Coast though. Again, very active weather out here that's important for you folks as well. So I think going through this afternoon, we'll definitely see some scattered snow showers through Oregon, southern Idaho, Utah, even into Colorado and Wyoming here, and even northern Nevada there. Uh, but it's really going into overnight tonight and uh, really early tomorrow morning that this kind of wave of precipitation begins to move on in. And here we go. Look at all of this moisture right off the Pacific slamming into southern Oregon and northern California. And that stream of moisture getting even up over the mountains some and into uh, Nevada and into portions of Utah going into uh, our overnight tonight. Now, the uh, this will not be only rain and uh, snow event. We kind of notice some of these pink colors showing up here into coastal Oregon, or at least interior a little bit, but uh, that's going to be some ice. We're going to have a little bit of a warm nose that pushes through here, and uh, that's definitely going to uh, you know lead to some changing of precipitation type here. Uh, but you'll notice going into tomorrow afternoon, here comes the brunt of the storm, and there comes the brunt of the ice here. I know kind of hard to see, but up here into sections of northern Oregon, we've got a lot of pink uh, and uh, purple showing up on your map, indicating sleet and freezing rain, uh, while you've got a complete washout at the coast and a complete blizzard in the higher terrains. Uh, so again, very dynamic system here, one that the West Coast is accustomed to, but nonetheless uh, going to be very active here. And this is going into tomorrow afternoon. Again, the brunt of that storm now moving inland here uh, with that 996 millibar low into tomorrow evening. A lot of snow, a lot of rain, a lot of ice still falling. Uh, before luckily finally going into our Sunday morning that low pressure gets far enough inland that the coast should clear out but now the higher terrains back towards Utah, uh, Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, and Nevada there then get in on some of that big time snowfall about 48 hours from now. So speaking of that snow over the next 48 hours, I mean, if you're living here in the mountains of uh, Oregon, I don't really know what to tell you other than uh, get a shovel, get a snow plow, get whatever you can, because you're going to get absolutely buried here with feet of snow just within the next 48 hours. Uh, again, a lot of snow here. Again, also very elevation driven. So if you uh, live in those higher, you know, really high peaks, a lot more snow. If you're kind of middle of the range, uh, then maybe not quite so much. But as I always recommend, go to weather.gov, click on your exact uh, coordinates on that map, and that'll give you a way more in-depth breakdown of your elevation and how much snow you can expect with that sort of elevation. Now down here through the south, again, same story through uh, kind of uh, sections of California um, and into Nevada and Utah. Again, we're going to see a lot of snow here as well. And also, let me make sure that uh, you could actually see the other map. Um, that might make it a little bit easier to see for you folks in uh, Colorado, Utah, and um, uh, Wyoming. So if you need to pause here, again, go back and look at those exact totals. Okay. Uh, now, into the southern section of the Rockies and the desert southwest, again, we're going to see snow here, especially in those higher terrains of Utah and through the Sierra Nevadas, plenty of snow on the way, uh, but same story for you folks uh, in the north. Just kind of click on your coordinates, weather.gov is the website, straight from the uh, National Weather Service, they're the real experts and honestly probably the best forecasters in your specific area, uh, they'll give you a much better breakdown, so I definitely recommend doing that for exact snowfall totals. Now, ice also likely going to be a concern here, and uh, here we go. Some of these totals here into western 
uh, Oregon and northern and uh, northwestern Oregon specifically, this is a lot of ice. Anytime you get past a tenth of an inch, we get problems. Anytime, anytime you get past a quarter of an inch, you really start to have problems. And once you get near half an inch, like we're seeing here on some of these projections, you get big time problems. A lot of power outages, uh, basically impossible travel at this point as well. Uh, that's going to be a big time concern here for much of uh, the northwestern corner of the state. So. Again, if you uh, can avoid traveling, definitely avoid it tomorrow and really starting tonight as well as things really begin to go downhill. Alrighty, that's the two storm systems. Now let's talk about this Arctic outbreak and a third potential storm system here really quickly. Uh, so this is right now what we're seeing. Here's our big storm system uh, that has been crossing the country, that working on through. And here is that big time Arctic air mass swinging in behind it. You'll notice today, if you're watching in Montana, uh, it's frigid out there, absolutely brutal. And as we move this ahead, uh, going into this weekend and into early next week, you'll notice that area of very uh, kind of um, you know shallow uh, atmosphere there indicating those very cold temperatures slowly work south and east and we cool down big time. And when I say cool down, I mean uh, we get kind of frigid, locked in the freezer a little bit here. Uh, and this is going again into tomorrow. Now that kind of hangs around for a little bit, but you'll notice going into early next week, we get a reinforcing shot of cold air with this trough. And this is the one that potentially um, you know, I say potentially kind of lightly, but also strongly here at the same time because some of our models are definitely hinting at it. This could lead to some low pressure trying to form here along the Gulf Coast and riding up along this Arctic boundary. And should that happen, we could get a snow and or ice storm through potentially sections of the southeast and also back towards Oklahoma, Texas and Arkansas. Uh, so I guess really what I could have done is just drawn it like this. Uh, anywhere in here could potentially, or actually let me draw it even better for you so I'm not lying to you anywhere in here really could potentially get some sort of winter weather out of this. Um, now I'll go more in depth on that here in just a moment, but first of all, let's take a look at these very cold temperatures. Uh, again today, we're pretty warm and cold depending on where we're at. Here's that low pressure and you're wondering why it's so strong. Why are we seeing these blizzard conditions? Uh, well, we've got a lot of atmospheric conditions here working in hand. We've got very warm air out of the Gulf working northbound, and then we've got very cold air out of Canada uh, working around the storm system. And what's happening is these two are getting very close to each other and they're interacting, and that's causing a very big pressure gradient or temperature gradient. And obviously what Earth likes to do when there's things not in balance, it tries to balance it, and that's why we're seeing all that wind. Uh, it's trying to you know balance that cold air towards the hot, uh, the hot air and to kind of find an equilibrium. Uh, but unfortunately, at the end of the day, that cold air is definitely going to win out. Here we go. Uh, going into Saturday, Sunday, look at these very cold temperatures. And I will also mention this map uh, is not showing what the actual temperature is. Okay, This is temperature anomaly, meaning how far is this from normal? Uh, so for example, here in central Kansas, this says negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That does not mean your temperature is negative 40. Uh, that means if your high temperature is normally 40, your high temperature here would be zero degrees. Uh, so again, not much better, but I don't want you to think this map is saying you're going to be 40 degrees below zero uh, here on Sunday afternoon. Uh, but you'll notice, again, that kind of hangs in the central part of the country. But once we get that reinforcing shot of cold air, uh, now that very cold Arctic air slowly works eastbound. And this is when we'll have to watch for some winter weather. Uh, in the southeast and mid-Atlantic and potentially even northeast going into the middle of next week as those very cold temperatures hang on. And again, they could last for a while here. And we could even see more reinforcing shots of that cold air going towards the uh, second half of the month here. All right, so let's talk about these snow chances a little bit. Now, one place I am feeling pretty confident will likely see something is out here through Oklahoma, Texas, and Arkansas. This is our latest GFS model. This is Sunday afternoon. You'll notice that second shot of Arctic air allowing some precipitation to kind of form here. Uh, and what I will mention is there's kind of two types of air masses we have in meteorology. We have polar air masses and we have Arctic air masses. Uh, now, the terminology is a little confusing, but just know Arctic air masses are much um, colder, but also because of that, not so sloped, meaning whenever they move on through, um, you're kind of having a very small uh, slope there that's not allowed to push too much air up, meaning uh, not as much precipitation to form. Compared to polar uh, fronts, where it's kind of what we're seeing today, and that's why we're seeing that severe weather, it's much taller, it's able to you know have a lot more lift with it. Uh, and because of that difference here, because this second front is Arctic, we're not going to have that much precipitation to squeeze out here. Uh, so here we go. You'll notice the light snow trying to break out on the latest GFS for Sunday afternoon through Oklahoma and Kansas. And that slowly kind of works eastbound. But uh, here we go. Uh, we kind of get low pressure to try to form here. Again, we do still have warm Gulf air here, here kind of clashing with this uh, Arctic boundary. And because of that, these two are going to slowly spin around each other. And next thing you know, we've got low pressure. Uh, that's what this GFS uh, run is indicating here. 
Should this happen, this would be Monday morning, snow breaking out through Oklahoma, Arkansas, with ice to the south of there uh, through DFW and into northern Louisiana. Uh, now, as we go into Monday evening, this low pressure continues to gain strength, and going into uh, kind of our overnight Monday into Tuesday, we've got snow breaking out through the Tennessee River Valley, as far south as northern Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and even up through much of the state of Tennessee here. Uh, and you'll notice low pressure now kind of continuing to, again, develop multiple areas kind of fighting for uh, dominance, if you will, here, but still low pressure developing. And then that eventually works up the coastline, and now we've got a bit of a snow or ice storm in North Carolina, Virginia, and then even up along the I-95 corridor here going into next Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got a big shield of Arctic air and snow overtaking much of the Ohio River Valley and northeastern United States as well as the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, now, don't get too excited. This is just one model run. You'll notice that kind of swings on through here and gets out of here. If we take a look at the European model, let me move this ahead, it kind of uh, starts the same here, but a little bit weaker. You'll notice not as much lift in the atmosphere here, just more of a light snow shower event for Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Kansas. Uh, again, that would be Sunday afternoon. And as we move this ahead, here we go. Uh, it kind of starts again the same as the GFS. Some low pressure tries to develop here as we get a bit of a short wave in the atmosphere. And, uh, you know, snow and ice in the same general areas, albeit very light snow and ice. And then that, here we go. You think, okay, we're going to get very close to the GFS. It's developing. Here comes a big storm. And sure enough, we do see snow in northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, uh, north Georgia, Tennessee, uh, and even uh, potentially into North Carolina a little bit. But then poof, it's gone. Uh, then that kind of just, you know, forms low pressure way much later and way further out to sea. And uh, then, you know, all we see is a little bit of snow and ice in the extreme southern part of the deep south. Or maybe not the extreme southern part of the deep south, but in the deep south, I should say. Uh, so you'll notice two very different things here. Uh, now, I'm not going to get super behind the science uh, right now, why we're seeing those differences. I'll save that for tomorrow when we don't have a massive you know, storm out west and in the central part of the country to talk about. Uh, but just know it all has to do with energy in the atmosphere. And unfortunately, a lot of the energy that is likely to form whatever storm does form is uh, still out over the Pacific Ocean, kind of in the middle of no man's land. So as we get through the next couple of days, uh, we'll be able to gain more data on this, uh, run it through our computer models, and have a better idea of what's to come. Uh, but just know the potential is there. Uh, that I do feel very strongly about. And you'll notice that here on our GFS Ensemble members. Uh, percent chance of at least an inch of snowfall, the key at the bottom of your screen here. Again, uh, going into that first chunk of the storm, uh, much of Arkansas here getting a very high numbers on this, indicating at least a 70% chance you see at least a, an inch of snow. And even as we move this further east on the GFS, again, this is a very, you know, sizable storm signal here. Uh, again, eastern Tennessee up near that 80% mark, uh, even down into the triad of North Carolina, about 30, 40%, uh, about 60, 65% back towards Nashville. And even here kind of into northern Mississippi, Alabama, and along and north of the I-85 corridor in the Carolinas, uh, showing a storm signal here, uh, although, again, lower chances. Uh, and again, even going up along the I-95 corridor, many cities here passing 70% chance on the GFS ensembles. Now, if we look at the European ensembles here for those same areas, you'll notice there's definitely a signal here. Again, still passing about 70% here uh, and past 50 into northern Mississippi, Alabama, central Tennessee, and southern Arkansas. But as we look at the East Coast, these numbers are a lot more lackluster, more of that 30 to 40% chance here through the I-95 corridor. Uh, so if you take the average of about 40% and 70%, we're still at about 50 to 60% chance of seeing some sort of snow here. Now, that doesn't mean it'll be a big time snowstorm, doesn't mean it'll be a blizzard. And in fact, I highly doubt we'll see a blizzard out of this. But what it does mean is we have the energy there. We just need them to connect. Uh, and we've got plenty of cold air in place. So again, I'm feeling uh, relatively confident considering how this year has gone so far and uh, how these storms have kind of snuck up on us a little bit. I think this very well could be the first, um, I don't want to say big time, but first winter event for the southern half of the country and potentially even the I-95 corridor going into early next week. Now, again, before we get there, though, we've got other stuff to kind of get through here this week. And uh, hopefully we kind of ran through all that in today's video. Uh, now, again, if you did enjoy the video and you haven't already subscribed, definitely do that. Like the video if you like it and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and uh, kind of what your favorite part of the video was. Always uh, am interested to hear what you do like and what you maybe don't like so much about these videos. Um, again, though, with that said, hope you have a great rest of your Friday out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.